So anyway, as I was saying, um, I like to do these this unit here for two reasons. One, it reinforced, as I said, the algebraic side of the unit we just did. And as you go further and further into math, you are going to be relying more and more on the algebra of si side of things and less and less on the graphing side of things. As a matter of fact, what will happen as you go further along is you will do all your work algebraically. You will prove it all. It'll be a half page of algebra. And then all of a sudden, the last part of the question will be seen. Now put it on a graph. It's not the other way around. Whereas now, we can do almost all our work if we look at a graph first, and then we apply it to the algebra. It's not going to be the case because the graphs are going to get more and more complicated. Okay? So that's what this unit is doing here. But it's so tiny, I don't even give a test on it. But I do give an assignment. So I'd like to get through it as quickly as, the, my part of it as quickly as possible, and then let you work on that assignment. Now, that assignment, as I was saying, it's the algebra side of the whole unit we just did. So it will be very helpful in getting you ready for your test that is going to be happening in the second block today on graphing equations. Okay? Okay. Um, I will warn you because, of course, some of you cannot fathom doing a test without knowing how big it is. This one is like eight pages. But it's graphs. So there's only like two questions per page because i got to have graphs. So chill. All right? When it falls on your desk, it's going to go thump. But it's not a big test. Any bigger than anything else. Okay? Okay. So uh, who can remember without looking it up and of course, you're allowed to look it up because you don't have to memorize it. But who can remember um, one of the four forms to writing a function? Any one of them. I don't care which one. Zach, point slope. Point slope. Do you remember what it actually looks like, my man? <clears throat> and what do we know about that? We know a bunch of stuff if we saw that written out, yeah? Let's actually write it out with some numbers. Um, somebody give me a number between 1 and 5. 4y minus 4. 4 looks too much like y. Uh, give me another number between 1 and 10. 2. y minus 2 equals... Uh, now give me two numbers between 1 and 10. 6 sevenths x minus plus 4. All of you should be able to put that on a graph right now. Whether you can or not is kind of important because that's what you're about to get tested on. But from this perspective, what do you know about that line? Jesha. The points on the graph that it's going to, that where it could start, yes? And what are those points? Negative 4, 2. And then from there, you would count for your slope. Right? How, what is slope? Rise over run. Now, the thing about point-slope form, the reason I like it so much, is it's infinite. Right? I could put right here um, plus 11 and mine plus 4. And it would get me the same line. Right? Okay. Who remembers the second one? Pardon me? Slope intercept. And what's that one? Y equals MX plus B. And again, if I put it in with some numbers... You can solve that because the first point that you know is 0, negative 4. And then we count our slope from there. Now the issue with both of these are negative slopes. Negative slopes means one 
of the rise or the run needs to be negative. Only one of them. And the third one. General form. Now, the thing about general form is, as it's written, does it tell us anything about the graph? As it's written. No. We can't do anything with this. We must apply algebra before we can do anything with that. And that is the same for his ugly cousin, which is standard form, ax plus by equals c, 3x plus 2y equals 6. And again, algebra. But there's more to these two. We have to remember A must be positive and A, B, C must be integers. And moving between the two, is just algebra. Move stuff around until it looks like something you're comfortable with. That was poor grammar. Move it around until something, until it looks like something with which you are comfortable. Because nothing bothers me more than poor grammar. That's not actually true. A lot of things bother me more than poor grammar. But I can't control a lot of things. I can control whether or not my grammar is good. All right. Often. The question will tell you the form. That looks like forum. The form. Read that question. What form should I use? Slope-intercept. Why? Because the question says you have a slope and a y-intercept. So you're going to use y-intercept. What is it? Or x-intercept. Or slope-intercept. So what is it? y equals 5x plus 4. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, change it to these two. Shouldn't even take me, I shouldn't have to do a thing. Standard form, AX plus BY equals C. General form, yes sir, AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Make this look like that, and then make it look like that. It should literally take about five seconds. Go. Some of you got it done in the time it takes me to say it should literally take about five seconds. Go. Which makes me very happy. That bodes very well for your test that is coming up in a very few minutes. What's this one? Who's telling me? Who's today's bestie? 
Nobody? It's a complicated question, I know. Charlotte. Done. Very well done. What? Is she done? Is she done? She's so close. She's knocking on the door. She's got one and a half out of two. Why does it need to be negative four? If I move the Y over here, I got to move the four over here, right? So I move the Y, then I got to move the four. And I'm using red because red was the standard form. Now, general form, she was almost right. 5x minus y plus 4 equals 0. Because in that case, only the y had to move. Now, I need you all to understand, because some of you don't, what I'm doing here. Okay? More than once, somebody has asked a question, oh my God, how did you do that? Just very quickly, it will take only two seconds. 2x plus 3 equals 7. You all know how to do algebra this way. Minus 3, minus 3. 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 2. Right? All I'm doing is that, but I am trusting that you're in the 10th grade. So I'm moving that, and it becomes minus 3. 2x equals 7 minus 3, which is 4. Everybody understands that, right? Everybody? Okay. Let us go back over here. What form of the equation are you going to use there? Point slope or slope point, depending on who taught it to you. I always say point slope but I wrote on your note slope point or other way around. I can't remember which I do. Now I'm all confused. Now I want to know. Ah, yes. I say point slope, but a lot of other people say slope point. I've been, I am confused. So we're going to use that one though, aren't we? And what's the only thing we have to remember? Let's pretend we can't remember this fact. The numbers that go into the equation are the opposite of what these are. Let's pretend we can't remember that. But let's remember that in my data booklet, we get y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Because that's written in our data booklet. I don't have to memorize that. So then all I got to do is fill it in y minus y, there's my y, y minus minus 2 equals m, 2 thirds, slope, bracket, x minus 6. What do I got to do there? Change it to y plus 2, because minus minus 2 is y plus 2, and there is my equation, Yes? Now, I'm going to rewrite it right here so we have it on the next page. You are welcome to do that as well when you turn your page over, if you wish. And now we do the hardest thing in all graphing, turning point-slope form into standard and general form. It is the hardest thing because it requires the most simple algebra steps. I have to make that look like that. So what needs to be gotten rid of? I need to get rid of the fraction, because there's no fractions here. I need to get rid of the brackets, because there are no brackets here. Right? So let's do so. What would get rid of my fractions or my brackets? Because it does not matter what order we approach this in, does it? Because we're going to get to the same place. 
If I were to tell you to meet me at the office, we could go out that door, half of you would turn right, half of you would turn left, but we'd all get to the office because there's no right order to get there. So what do you want to do first? Remember, you are in charge. So whoever says whatever they want to do is the way we're going to do this. What would you do if I had gave you the magic pen? Because I want to give you the magic pen, but you guys don't want the magic pen. You would get rid of the fraction. Okay, what gets rid of the fraction? The fraction is 2 divided by 3. The part we need to get rid of is the divided by 3. So what do I do? Multiply by 3. Now, let's pretend you don't actually know why this works. That's fine. All you got to do is know this because it's summer school. So let's just get through it, right? 3 and 3, that is technically 3 over 1. So you have a three on the top and a three on the bottom and they're multiplying, you can cancel them out. That's all you need to know. So now I have two X minus six. Except what do I have to remember to do to the other side that half of you are gonna forget? Multiply it by three. And then half of you that remember to multiply by three are gonna forget that the three has to go to both of them. And you're gonna tell me this side is three Y minus two. It's not, is it? What is it? 3y minus 6. Now what? 3y plus 6, I mean. Now what? You're going to do distribution over here, yes? 3y plus 6 equals 2x minus 12. Now what has to move to get me to that? I should move, Zach says I should move the Y. Why did you say the Y? So I can keep the X positive. Too many of you think that I have to have the X on the left here. I do not, do I? Because this could be over here. Well, it would have brought the other part of the equal sign too. But you know what I mean, you silly guys. So, he's going to leave the X there, which means what moves? The 3 has got to move over here. What is going to happen to it? 2X. What's it going to become? Minus 3Y. Minus 3Y. What's going to happen to this? It's going to move over here and become what? Plus 12. What's already over here? Six, so what does that become? 18. Now, if this offends you, you can't handle writing it this way. It has to look like this. Then write it like this. 2x minus 3y equals 18. You know... I appreciate that our district gets us such quality equipment with which to work. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah? Well, you guys are getting a rebuild, kind of. Or did that already happen? That happened already, didn't it? Okay. All right, and then the easy... Now, we go from the hardest thing to do in this whole two units to the easiest thing to do in these whole two units, which is turn standard form to general form. Yes, sir. Look under there. So, what do I do? Just bring the 18. What do I got to remember that half of you are going to forget that's going to cost you a half a mark? Got to change the sign. 2x minus 3y minus 18 equals 0. While you're waiting for me, you do C. Good one.
ਨਾ ਮਿਲੀ ਹੈਗੀ Make that look like that. So what do I got to do? I got to isolate Y, which means if you had to move your friend to a new house, it's not you that's moving to a new house. It's your friend. So who should move most of the boxes? Your friend or you? Your friend. So which of these three boxes should you move? Because you don't want to move more than you have to. You're going to move just the three Y. And what do you got to remember? Change the sign. 2X minus 18 equals 3Y. Now what? Is Y isolated? No, Y still has this three that's bugging it to dance. What do you do? Two-thirds X minus six equals Y. And now I'm done. Now, the problem that you will see here, again, is because some of you still don't understand this relationship. This is 2 times x. And they're all divided by 3. Why then can we write it as a fraction? Because that is the same as saying this is 2 thirds times x over 1. Right? That's why this works. A great many of you still are like, eh, I don't know what to do with that. Number five. What form do I want? Slope intercept. So I want y equals mx plus b. What do I have? I only have x's and y's. Do I have a point? I have two points, but I do not have the two things I need here, do I? I have an X and a Y, but I am missing an M and a B. So what will I do to solve this problem? What did Myers say to do every time? Find slope. How do I find slope when I got two points? Y2 minus Y1. Now, who would like to label these? Each is going, why should we? Because it, it doesn't matter, does it? 
Doesn't matter what you say X1 and Y1 are. The only way you can screw this up is if you do this. Okay, that's X1. So that must be Y2. Because there's a second thing I saw. If you do that, you're in trouble. If that's X1, what's that? Y1. And then what's that? X2. And then what's that? Y2. How many people would label it that way? So that means every hand that isn't up would label it this way. X2, Y2, X1, Y1. Correct? But it doesn't matter which way we label it because we're going to get the same answer, aren't we? Five minus four over one minus minus two, which is one plus two, which gets me one third. If I go the other way, it's four minus five over negative two minus one, which is negative one over negative three, which is one third. It doesn't matter. Now, where can I put that fraction? In for the, for the M. So I can come back over to here and I can use hot pink and write Y equals one third X plus B. What is missing now? Just the B. I can find the B in a whole lot of ways, can't I? Give me one way I could use to find B. I could fill in the X and Y. With what numbers, Zach? The numbers from the question. Why am I allowed to do that? Because both of these are just X's and Y's. And what are these? X's and Y's. Does it matter which one I use? No, I have two choices. I could go this way. Five equals one third times one plus B. Or I could go this way. Four equals one third times negative two plus B. Doesn't matter which way. No. Why is this going to be a problem for some of you? Because some of you are scared of fractions. This is 5 equals 1 third plus B. So I have to move that over there, don't I? What's going to become of that positive 1 third? It is going to be minus 1 third. Which means what does B equal? What is 5 take away 1 third? Four and two-thirds. If I come over to the other side here, that is four equals negative two-thirds plus B. When I bring that over there, what does it become? Positive two-thirds. Four plus two-thirds is four and two-thirds equals B. So now I can write this all nicely and I'm going to let anybody choose the color. What color? Orange? Orange was the first call, even though we've already used orange here. But we've also already used purple. The final answer is, I'm out of room, Y equals one-third X plus four and two-thirds. Dun, dun, dun. Talk to me, so. No. That's a different thing. Okay. Is everybody good? All right. Look at six and tell me what form I should use. A lot of people said slope intercept. Why did you say slope intercept? Because it says slope and intercept. Except look. What does that say? X intercept. 
a bunch of you would tell me, oh, Myers, you just put this in to see if I was paying attention. Ha, ha, ha. Y equals five-thirds X plus two. Would that be correct? Why not? Because as an X-intercept, right? So as an X-intercept, that gives us a point of two zero, doesn't it? So what would you really want to use here? Point slope form, which would, of course, be y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And you would fill it in. y minus 0 is what? What is it? It's just y equals m 5 thirds x minus 2. Now, is that technically done? Is that the equation of the line in one of the acceptable forms? Yes, because y minus 0 is y. Right? You're allowed to leave stuff like that once you get to one of the forms. Okay? Some of you are bothered by that. You're like, ooh, yuck, I don't like it. Blah. But you would like the slope-intercept version even less because there would be fractions all over it and fractions make you guys run to the hills. Fractions are your Shrek. It, they make you want to get pitchforks and torches and kill them dead. I don't know why, but for some reasons, fractions scare you all. And they will continue to scare you till grade 12. Ask any grade 12 teacher, what's the worst thing your kids do in math? They'll all say fractions. I don't know why. Because you spent seven effing years learning how to do them. And you're still scared of them. You didn't even take seven years to learn to talk. All of you speak English. The hardest language in the world to learn. And you learned it. If you spoke English from birth, you learned it in one year. But fractions, oh no, those will kick your ass, let me tell you. Uh-oh, what are you going to do for number seven? What's this? That's a point, right? So what should we search for if we already have a point? We should find slope. How are we going to find slope? Are there some hints to slope in the rest of the question? What are they? What are the hints in the rest of that question of finding slope? Parallel. What does that mean? That the slope I need is the same as that. But that is in what form? Standard form. Does standard form give us the slope? Not without doing what? Not without applying algebra, right? So first, let's kick this guy into shape so he's telling us the slope. He's like a, a, a low-level a uh, gangster and we're the bad cops. Okay? Well, I'm the bad cop. You guys can all be the good cop. You can be the ones that like bring it coffee and talk to it about its mom. And I'm going to be the one that comes in and as soon as you turn your back, I grab it by the back of the head and I bounce its head off the table and then you come in and he's like, Ugh. and I'm like, I don't know what happened. Okay? That's what we'll do here. So since I'm that guy, I'm going to bust this guy up right now. 4y equals negative 2x. Why do I not care about the 7? Because all of you are going to be worried about the 7. Why do I not need to worry about the 7? Well, you're the good cops. So you're worried about everything. Why do I not care about the 7? Because I'm only trying to find the slope. The 7 is this guy's girlfriend. I don't care about her. She doesn't know nothing. But I've seen enough movies to know that the girlfriend actually knows and the guy really knows nothing. 
My daughter's been watching Suicide Squad the last few days. I hadn't actually seen it. I've still only seen bits of it now. So I'm in a, I'm in a Suicide Squad type of vibe right now. So now what? Now what? Divide by four. Which means what's my slope? Negative one half, because of course you would never leave that fraction. Now, do I have a slope? Because that of course is M. Do I have a slope and a point? So can I put it in point slope form? Because remember, point slope form is our best friend because there's an infinite amount of points on the graph, right? Which means there's an infinite number of right answers. Whereas with slope intercept form, there's only one right answer, isn't there? And that one right answer is the y intercept. But with point slope, it's every single point on the whole graph. So it's y minus one equals negative one half x minus minus three plus three. And all of you are capable of this, right? All right. Show me what you know. Do eight. Oh my God, Mr. Myers, it's so hard. Except it's not. It's exactly the same as seven with one word difference, which requires you to know one different concept to do the whole question. Go. All that knowledge of vanilla ice, I hope you were paying attention. That's key. That's what's going to be on your final. I'm just joking. Bonus question. <laughs> Bonus question on your final. What's the name of... <laughs> yeah, the Vanilla Ice Project. Is that what it was called? Shut up, really? He even called it the Vanilla Ice Project? Oh my God, that guy's the biggest loser in the world. Do you all know his real name? Robert Van Winkle. Not a word of a lie. His name is Robbie Van Winkle. Because Vanilla Ice was big in 1990 when I was your age. Um, you know what? He was no different than anybody else. He was just a guy talking in rhymes. There's no skill involved. He wrote good songs. The songs rhymed just like everybody else's rap. The problem with him was he was pretending, like I say, to be a badass when he grew up in, like, middle-class Florida. But what everybody forgets is 90% of those hardcore gangsters also grew up in middle-class homes and were pretending to be hardcore. Rap is the professional wrestling of the music world because 90% of the guys in it are fake. They look hardcore, just like the guys in WWE look like they would kick your ass. But they just got muscles. They don't actually know how to fight or nothing. Or they'd be in UFC. Right? If you want to know, if you want to see something really funny and you're actually serious about it, get the movie CB4. It's written, directed, and starring Chris Rock. You know who Chris Rock is, right? He's a black guy. He doesn't, you know, and he cares a lot about race relations. That whole movie is making fun of gangster rap because so many of those guys are lying clowns, right? Or they're bazillionaires and they're still pretending that they're on the street, right? It's horse crap. And you know it as well as I do, right? Abbotsford has their very own thug pun, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know anything about that guy, but I know Abbotsford. And Abbotsford ain't no Compton, right? I mean, I know the people in Abbotsford would, would like to think that Abbotsford is Compton. But if you ask the people in Compton, hey, do you want to come and live in the worst part of Abbotsford? Please. Because it's better than here. What? No. No. You're doing that. When all those five things are done, we'll talk about it. Vanilla Ice Project. What a tool. No. Do math. We're almost to work time. 
We got one more page and then we're at work time. All right, line A is right here. What form are you gonna use for line A? Does it cross the Y axis? So could you use slope intercept form? But should you use slope intercept form? The red circle is right on the Y intercept. Should you use slope intercept form? Why not, Charlotte? Because it's going to be a fraction. You do not know what exactly it is, do you? But you see right there, you have a point, right? And right there, you have a point, right? And you could argue right there, you have a point, right? And between any of those points, you could find what? Slope up 1 over 4. So what's the slope of A? M equals 1 over 4. And you have three points. There's that one, negative 2, 3. There's that one, positive 2, 4. And there's that one, which is positive 3, 8. Which means you could write this equation in three ways, couldn't you? You could have y minus 3 equals 1 quarter x plus 2. You could have y minus 4 equals 1 quarter x minus 2. You could have y minus 8 equals 1 quarter x minus 3. And all of them would be equally right. Which is why, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, your next test takes me a little bit of time to mark. Because if you choose a different point than me, I have to check and make sure that it's done correctly. So all of you should have one of those. I'll write it out. Y minus 3 equals 1 fourth X plus 2. That's what I'm going with because it's the first one. B, where's B? What you going to do for B? Slope point form again because you got a point right there. 
and you got to point right there, and the slope is 3 over negative 2. So for B, it's going to be Y. That's negative 1, right? So it'll be Y plus 1 equals negative 3 halves X. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Plus 4. Or... You could use this one, which is y plus 4 and x plus 2. What you doing for c? c and d always cause kids trouble, and I don't really get why. What is c? Pardon me? It's got an undefined slope, so I cannot put it in point-slope form, nor can I put it in... Slope intercept form, can I? So I'm kind of in trouble, aren't I? But not really, because what is that x value? 5. What is that x value? x value. 5. What is that x value? What is that x value? That x value. That x value. That x value. That x value. What about this x value right in the middle? So the x value is always what? So the answer is x equals 5. What are you doing for d? y equals 9. Now the reason I think this screws you guys up so much is you get locked into your head, X's go this way. And you see a vertical line equaling X, and you're like, ugh. But you don't need to be, right? Because if you do that, you just figure it out. It's what makes sense, correct? And finally, what are you going to do for E? What do you see right there? It's an exact Y-intercept of what? Negative 6. So B equals negative 6. If you can find the M, you're in business. Down 1 over 3. Up 1 over 3. So that means our slope is 1 third. So Y equals 1 third X minus 6. Is everybody good? All right. Now. Now that you actually know how to do it, of course, we mess with your heads. What's weird about 10? There's an extra variable. But really, there isn't an extra variable, is there? Because what is that? X, what is that? Does the x-intercept give me an x and a y? What is the x and y that goes with an x-intercept? 3, 0. So if that's an x and that's a y, and that's an x and that's a y, really, how many variables do I have? What? No, because that's x and that's y. And that's x and that's y. So how many variables do I have? No, guys. Variables are unknowns. 1. Just K. So where does that 3 go? In for X. 3 times 3. That's no variable. I know it's 3. Plus 2 times Y. What's Y? 0 minus K equals 0. What's my job? Get K by itself, right? So what would happen if I did that? K would be by itself. And what's 3 times 3? 9 plus 2 times 0. What's 9 plus 0? So 9 equals K. Right? Go, finish the page. I have to find out who has those speakers. Because it's not next door. They're kicking. 
they should be playing some rap for us. Then we could be in here all raising the roof. It's pretty high, I know. You could do it at Yale. No. Although you want to know something funny, Sal? <laughs> in the late 80s, early 90s, I used to brush the front of my hair like vanilla ice. And in 1990, it was even bleached blonde. Just the front. Because I was a hardcore skater punk, so I grew my hair down over just over my eyes, but all the rest of it was short. And I tried to bleach it, but we had no money. So I used Sun In. I don't even know if you can still get that product. You spray it on your hair, you blow dry it, it bleaches your hair. But it's crap. And it turned my hair like orange. It was no good. So then I was like, this sucks. I have to fix this. And the vanilla ice came out and he had this little, this little like peak of hair here. So I did that instead. My grade 12 picture, you can see it a little bit over there. But my hair wasn't bleached in grade 12. My hair was bleached at the very end of grade 10, which is the end of the year where I'm in the white t-shirt. Took the picture at the end of September and I grew my hair out and over the whole year. Now my hair is gray. Maybe I should grow it back and get that skater thing going. Nothing sadder than aging punks. Although some punks age well. For example, Henry Rollins. None of you know who that is. But he was a hardcore rock punk guy. And now he's just a political commentator. But he's still pretty cool. Pardon me? A lot of word problems on your upcoming test? I think there's one. As always. And of course, there's all the right answers for C and D and E and F. Is everybody good? All right, now listen up. You've got eight minutes till break. In that eight minutes, you should start page 232. When you come back for your break, we are writing our test. When you finish your test, what should you work on? The rest of 232. Now, on your test, we did two reviews yesterday. One of which I got from you. The one that was out of 42. And then we did one that was out of like 28 or something, right? That's what we marked at the very end of the day, correct? Correct. Whatever that mark is, that's what you're telling me on the test. Which I will remind you of when I hand it out. Okay?